it's Robin and I just love to help people who are just struggling to make it through each day feel better so that they can fully participate in all of life's great adventures. And right now what I'm talking about is decluttering and that's a way that holds people back in life and really um, stops them from fully um, engaging in life. You know what, it, it can be a real drain when you have too much stuff in your house, you're tidying endlessly, getting nowhere and it just feels like, you know, this oppressive amount of stuff on you. But sometimes getting started decluttering is really challenging because you think, how do I know what to get rid of? And how do I know what to keep? You know, what if I make a mistake? I'm kind of a perfectionist, always have been, so that's always my thought is like, what if I mess up and get rid of something I shouldn't have? Or what if I keep something that I don't really need? So, you know, sometimes I hold myself back because I don't want to get started until I know how to do it 100% right. And really, there is no way. You just do your best and you just get started. But I do have some tips that can help with, uh, with this whole process. So when you go into the process of decluttering, just be open to letting things go. You know, that's really important. If you're like, okay, I'm going to do this, I'm going to go through everything, but I'm not going to get rid of anything because everything I have is really important to me. Well, it's probably not going to be the best attitude and you're probably not going to get the best results with that kind of attitude. One uh, uh, thing that I did find has really helped, and especially since I have gone through my room now, and my room is pretty clutter free and my bathroom, it has made a world of difference in how I feel. And now I can visualize uh, having a clutter free house, you know, in more areas, like just start to visualize what that would look like, what that would feel like, um, and it's really going to help you. So the basic rule of decluttering is to only keep things that spark joy. So what does that mean? Yeah, I know it's vague, but really it does work. So what you want to do is take each item one at a time and hold it and think, do I love this? Does this, does this spark joy in me? If not, get rid of it. If it does, then keep it. You know, simple as that. Don't complicate it any more, any more than that. If you have something that you think you will use someday, but maybe you've had it for, you know, if you've had it for months or you've had it for years and you've never used it, you probably are not going to use it. And I would say just get rid of it. And if the time comes up where you're like, oh, I really wish I had that thing and I really want to do that, whatever it is, then go get another one and actually do it. But don't keep stuff because you might do it someday when you, you know, history has proven that you're not doing it. Um, it kind of like my scrapbooking stuff, you know, I used to scrapbook before I had kids and then I don't know, it just got too busy. It was too much of a time investment. And so I had all this scrapbooking stuff and that I was going to use someday. And finally I was like, the kids might as well make some use of this. I'll use some for uh, guides for crafts and that kind of thing instead of just hoarding it all because I'm probably not actually going to use it someday. Um, so another thing you don't want to do is holding on to things for fear of the future. So like if you're, if you're afraid that you're going to run out of things and you need to have extra, so maybe you have uh, an extra set of dishes or you have, um, like I found three fly swatters underneath my kitchen sink, which I actually put back there and now I'm thinking, I don't know why I did that. I need to get rid of two of them because I do not need three fly, fly swatters. And I put them back there because I was like, oh, well, if I can't find one or if I lose one uh, or if one breaks, then I'll have more. Well, and there are fly swatters. I don't need to keep three. And now that I'm going to be organized and everything's going to have a place, I'm going to know where to get it and I'm going to be putting it back there. So it's not going to be a problem. So I'm going to get rid of those. But also don't hold on to things because of, um, to preserve the past. Because remember that you're not, you don't need to have stuff to preserve your memories. Your memories are there. So an example is when I was going through my closet, I had all of these race t-shirts. You know, those t-shirts that you get from when you run a 5k or whatever and they'd been special events that I'd done with friends and you know there's a lot of pride that went with them so I kept all these t-shirts even though now most of them didn't fit well I don't know they have like they're made weird and they have high necks and they're not comfortable so I've like never worn them because they don't feel good and so but I've kept them and some of them I kept for like before I had kids um, but I've never ever worn them and I just came to the realization that those memories are there, whether I have the t-shirt or not. The t-shirt is just taking up space in my closet. It's not preserving the memory. So don't get caught up in that this thing is preserving your memory because your memories are there. You don't need that thing to preserve it. And I probably, you know, I have pictures of, you know, of those races or, or those kind of things as well. So that can be something that preserves your memory and not the thing like the t-shirt. 
Okay, so if you go through all of the, oh, the other thing you want to think about is the 20 rule. And my friend Jana told me about this and I think it's brilliant. If you're not sure about getting rid of something, you're kind of thinking, I might need it, I don't know. So think about, can it be replaced? Is it something you can get within 20 minutes of you for under $20? Because if it can be, that's a pretty low investment. So get rid of it. If you, need to, if you find you need it, you can go and get it for under $20 within 20 minutes. You can just go do it then. Um, but most of the time, those things that we think we might need, we don't. So it's pretty rare. That, and I think she given me the example that they had given away, I don't know, there was like two things in five years or something that fell into that category. And another thing um, that really helped me when I was, when I first started this a couple years ago actually, was thinking that you might give something away that you want later and that's okay. Like just recognizing that there will be casualties and that's okay and it's worth it to like, you know, maybe a year down the road, you're gonna want one thing, but you got rid of like 500 things out of your house uh, and, and there was only one thing that you wished you hadn't or you wanted again or you ended up going and buying again, totally worth it. So just keep that in mind that it's okay if, if there is something that you give away that you wish you hadn't. It's gonna happen and it's okay. Um, so if you're still not sure, I have a, a list of questions that you can ask yourself about an item if you're not sure about whether or not to keep it. So first of all, ask yourself, is this something I regularly use? If it is, you're probably not even going to through this series of questions because you probably um, knew you were gonna keep it because you use it all the time. If it's not, ask yourself if it's something that sparks joy. If it truly sparks joy in you and you love it, it makes you feel really good, then keep it. Um, the next question to ask yourself is, can I get away without having this in my life? Like, how is that gonna impact me? When was the last time you used it? If, and, and when I, we used to move all the time, I used to do that every time we moved. If I had not used something since the last time we moved, whether it was one year or two years, which is usually the most, once in a while, I think once it was three years, then it was gone. I would get rid of it because obviously I didn't need it if I hadn't used it in that time. So think about when was the last time you used it and if you can't remember, you don't need it, get rid of it. And are you keeping it out of obligation or expectation? We all get those gifts <laughs> that, you know, we don't love, but somebody has put the time and thought into giving them to us and so we feel obligated to keep them. And I want you to think about it in a different way. So when that person gave you that gift, they probably weren't expecting you to keep it forever. They wanted to give you something in that moment. And when they gave you that gift, it served its purpose. You receiving it and saying thank you that was its whole purpose, perhaps, right? It doesn't have to be something that's valuable to you and useful to you and that you keep forever. Um, so, and do you have multiples of the same thing? So like my flask water example, I have three flask waters, I'm gonna get rid of two of them because I don't need three. Am I holding on to it because I think I should love it? If it's something that I don't love, but you wanna love it, you know, still get rid of it. You just, you don't need it. And are you saving it just in case? We all have that stuff that we save just in case. Someday, someday I might do this. Um, but chances are someday's not gonna come. So just get rid of it. And think about if, the, if you have something else that could do the same job. And if you do, uh, if something can do double duty, then get rid of the item that you, you don't need. Okay, am I holding on to a broken item to fix someday? This happens a lot in our house because our kids are like, Daddy, Daddy, can you fix this Barbie? And it's, you know, it's not that, it's kind of a cheap Barbie, its head is broken off, there's like a big piece of plastic out, it's probably not gonna last. And by the time we fix it, it's not, they're not, they don't even remember about it. Um, so, you know, maybe if it's something breaks, really make, uh, you know, really think about is it worthwhile fixing before you start storing it to fix someday? Because I know my husband does fix stuff, but I don't. <laughs> it's just gonna sit there in a pile. Uh, unless it's sewing or something, then I will do that. But if it's like something that needs to be, like a toy that needs to be fixed, I'm not gonna do it. So, um, you know, just don't add stuff just for the sake of keeping it in case. And if you're, if you're really truly not gonna put the time into fixing it, then don't keep it. And is it worth the time that you spend cleaning and storing it? Because it's an investment for, you know, everything we own it takes some energy and it takes some of our time and it takes space in our home, so is it truly worth it? 
And could I use this space for something else? Like say you can envision something else in that space. You know, maybe that that's a sign that you need to take out whatever is there, get rid of it and, you know, repurpose that area. Okay. And this is a big one for me. What's the worst that could happen if I get rid of it? You know, usually it's like, Oh, nothing. Or I need it and I have to go buy a $10 item, right? Like that's the worst case scenario. So totally worth it. And then think about, um, you know, generosity of spirit. Could someone else use it more than me? Cause if someone else could use it more, maybe you want to go and, and donate it so that someone else can, um, have that, you know, and may, and maybe they'll really make a, a valuable difference to them. And I think that's important too. So think about that generosity. So I hope these questions help when you, when you're going through decluttering and help you maybe even just help you decide to get started with the process so that uh, you have a better idea of what to keep and what to get rid of. So anyway, I hope you guys all have an amazing day.